Hey, you too. Just I need to come up with another um, blackout. You know, I was um, laying in the bed this morning and, you know, God had brought to my remembrance a exhortation that I had um, given like in 2001 at this church that I used to go to called Christian Fellowship Center out in Cleveland, Ohio. And the, um, the bishop that was over that particular congregation was Bishop McKinney. You know, my condolences to his family. It's been so many years since I've seen him. So, But um, it was a time where I was going through a very um, broken, a broken place. And um, every time I would go to church, you know, I'm always crying and, you know, just going through. And I guess... You know, the bishop saw that, you know, I think she got a word for the for the congregation. OK, so I'm like, you know, I never spoke really in front of a congregation. I mean, I was a youth leader at another church I attended back in Dayton, Ohio. But um, when he had um, had his secretary call me the day before Thanksgiving for during that time in 2001, um, she said that Bishop wanted me to give an exhortation, you know, Thanksgiving morning, right? So I was like, okay, I got a word, you know what I'm saying? Because I knew I had been in so much prayer and so much meditation at that time. It wasn't really meditation, really prayer. I ain't know nothing about meditation till right now since I've evolved. But back then it was more prayer and just laying before God and, you know, reading my word and, you know, just trying to heal from such a you know, a broken place, and um, I had a word, and the word was brokenness, and I had, um, you know, God had gave me the remembrance of the self-prophecy that I had spoken, and it was, um, you know, that God want us to be, you know, want to us to be broken in so many pieces so that he can put us back together the way he wants us to be put back together, not the way we want to be put back together. Because God didn't want no flesh on display. You know, that was the gist of the exhortation. But God just really wanted us to humble ourselves under his hand that in due season that he will exalt us. So in 2001, I'm like, okay, you know, it was an experience. It was really emotional, but I had got through it. And, um... That was pretty much what God had said at that time. So, you know, now in 2000 and, you know, 2019, 2020 is when, you know, my journey had really got intense where I had um, asked God to really show me who he was. And um, in him showing me who he was, he took me on a really... He took me on a journey for him to put the pieces back together the way he wanted them to be. Okay, that's what happened four years ago, three years ago, 2019, 20, 21, 22, yeah, two, three, four years ago that he had took me on this journey where he put the pieces back together the way he wanted them to be. And in doing that, I had to go through a process of literally dying to the old self. And everything, but my whole purpose in saying this is to say that you know, I had spoke this over my life twenty years ago. You know what I'm saying? Not knowing that I would have to go through this process, that there won't be no flesh on display, that me and God would become one, and that He would, you know, raise me up to be able to speak a word in season for those that are weary, for those that are broken, for those that need healing, for those that you know, are suffering or going through any type of trauma or this, just anything that's causing any harm to their emotional body. And the process that he took me to was really traumatic, really. But after you come out of it, he tried to, he shows you why you had to go through it because sometimes we go through things in life where, We have to experience it before we're able to share it. Because with the experience, there's a power behind it because you have really experienced it and you came through it. You understand what I'm saying? So, you know, I was sitting back thinking about um, P. 
people that are successful today, you know, I thought about Taraji. I really thought about Taraji because, you know, her message her message that she's sending out is really powerful when it's dealing with mental illnesses and really trying to, you know, get people back into a place of a healthy mindset and <clears throat> really getting people into a place where, you know, they can really become their true authentic selves. And I'm really down with her message. I really am because that's pretty much, you know, my thing is, we got, you know, the, the mental illness is really dealing with the trauma and the things that we have been through in our lives that we have not dealt with. We have not dealt with and we need to um, acknowledge the fact that, you know, we need to deal with those hidden pains that we don't want to look at. Those hidden, you know, traumas that has really, you know distorted us in a way where we just don't even know how to come back to that thing, you know, but God is good. God can deliver and set free and heal those that want to be healed and set free. See, the key is you have to yield to want to be a better person. You have to yield to want to be whole. You have to yield to want to be healed. You know, God ain't going to just heal you out of the blue. God ain't going to just make things okay. You got to want to be okay. You got to want to go through that process to be healed, to be just to be better, just to be in that place of being that true, authentic person that you was meant to be before the foundations of the earth. You know, and I like her message. I like what she's trying to do. And I salute her. I even salute her on taking a stance on her value and her worth. I don't know too much about the Oprah situation, but I really and truly admire her and I salute her. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, if we don't stand for nothing, if we don't stand for what's best for us, who going to stand for us? Nobody. If we don't fight for what we know is right and, and do based on our worth and our value, who going to do it? Nobody. No matter who you got to come up against, no matter who you got to, you know, defend yourself against, you stand on what you know is true. And I salute her for doing that. It was probably hard for her. You know what I'm saying? Because she coming up against big boys, you know, billionaires. They got money and connections. But God said, I'm bigger than all of that. Amen. So, you know, um, I just wanted to just come and share because my life was a self-made prophecy that I had to go through a lot of trials and tribulations. I had to go through a lot of tests to be able to be trustworthy, to be able to come to you and speak to you with the things that I speak to you on my channel. You know, this stuff is coming from a pure heart. This ain't just no random stuff that I'm talking about. This stuff is real. You know, it's people out there hurting. It's people out there that want to be healed and don't know how to be. You understand what I'm saying? Some people don't even believe in God. Some people don't even believe in there's a higher power. You know, some people don't believe in nothing. And it's really sad because if you really don't believe in anything, you just going through cycles over and over again, always wanting and never achieving, always projecting negativity. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just excited about coming into this understanding of this whole process that I had been through because he said, you spoke this over yourself. And I was like, I did. <laughs> and when he showed me, I was like, wow. And he took me through the process and I'm so glad he did. I'm so glad he did because knowing that God is with me every day, his presence is with me every day, knowing that I am divinely guided by the God that created everything. It is the most powerful thing that you can ever want to experience. And I desire that everybody in the world experience it. 
That was the ultimate desire for him when he created us from the foundations of the world. He wanted us to be one with him. He wanted us to yield our vessel unto him that he may use us for his glory. And that no flesh would be on display. He never wanted the flesh to be alive anyway. That's why we got to go through the processes of killing it. Because it wasn't supposed to be alive in the beginning. So, you know, I wanted to leave this scripture with y'all because this is one of the scriptures that he had given me based on the exhortation that I had spoken about 20 years ago. And it says the Lord is, is in Psalms 34, verse 18 through 20. And it says, the Lord is nigh unto them that are brokenhearted and save such as be of a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord deliver him out of them all. He keepeth all of his bones. Not one of them is broken. So, you know, really 18 and 19 pretty much is the gist of, you know, the broken spirit and the contrite heart. You know, he really delight in that. He really, and the only reason why he delight in a broken spirit and a contrite heart is because you were at your most vulnerable state. You are at your most vulnerable state where he's able to use you. He's able to remold you and rebuild you into the best version of who he wants you to be. You know, I thought about Kevin Hart when Kevin Hart was talking about, um, you know, his struggles and the things that he went through. To get to where he is, you know, everybody got a struggle. Taraji had a struggle, you know, she talk about it all the time when, you know, she had to walk across the stage with her with her son and people was telling her that she wouldn't be able to do this, that and the other. But look at God. Look at God. But see, this is what God has showed me, too. You know, those that are successful, those that are in a prosperous posture whether they're able to live a very comfortable and luxurious life. When God broke you, okay, because he had to shatter you in some way for you to have that drive to want to not want to be there no more. But the thing is, he wanted, he didn't want no flesh on display in doing it. He wanted you to have the drive and the desire to always put him before everything that you do. Because to be honest, the money really isn't yours. The homes, the cars, however, you know, luxury people live. You understand what I'm saying? It's really not ours. It's really God's. And the way that we use it and the way that we dis distribute it, if it's not bringing good to anybody, if it's not bringing good to the earth, it's being used or mishandled in a selfish and greedy way, God will take it away. And I'm just telling you the truth. He will. You know, and this is one of the things he was sharing with me. You know, when he desired that, because God is the abundant God. He's a limitless God. Everything that he gives to his people, he wants them to be able to enjoy it and be happy and be abundant and be generous and be giving. You know what I'm saying? Not to be, you know, hoarding or you know, be greedy, like, you know, I need more, I need more. I mean, need, you, I mean, you know, God is a limitless God. If you're operating in a, a vibration of who he is, which is unconditional love, you will always be abundant. You will always be in a limitless state where that you would never want for nothing because that's who he is. So if, if, you know, you have people that desire to want to be prosperous, it's all about making sure that your heart, your intentions, and, and why you do what you do is for the good. That it's not to cause harm. It's not to cause, you know, hurt to others. You know, oppressing others so that you can become rich. That's not what God wants. You know, and, and there's a lot of celebrities out there that is about trying to edify, build up, encourage, and empower people to be the best versions of, the, of themselves. You know, and I thought about Denzel Washington. He has a very powerful message, you know, that he give to his audience with the platform that he have. It's powerful. And I salute him as well. You know, I just, you know, picked up on a few people that God had put into my spirit. And I just be like, you know, keep doing what you're doing. You know, because God is a God that sees everything. 
He's all powerful, all knowing, and all present. We can't have nothing from God. We can't have our intentions. We can't have our thoughts, our motives. We can't have nothing from him. He see everything. So if you are trying to become the best version of yourself, that you can operate in a more authentic place, let it be a pure thing. You know what I'm saying? Because when you operate in your true authentic self, you're operating in a pure state. You're operating in a state of high vibration. You're operating in a state where you want people to, to be just as you. You know, you want, you want people to be healed. You want people to be happy. You want people to be successful and abundant and prosperous. You know, it's not like you want people to stay oppressed, especially when you have awakened to the truth of who you are. When God has given you a platform to be able to speak to millions of people, to help people be the best versions of themselves. You know what I'm saying? God put people on plat platforms for a reason. He don't put you on a platform just for entertainment because everybody that's on a platform has an influence on somebody. And you got to check what you inf how you influencing people. You know what I'm saying? From music to acting to to anything, even me, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, I think about, uh, what's her name? She's so sharp. What is her name? Um, mm. I'm sorry. I cannot remember her name. It'll come to me, but she, you know, she chose different type of um, movies to get in because she knew what type of movie was set a precedence for her in her future. I cannot remember her name, but I salute her too. I cannot remember her name. God damn it. I can't. But anyway, I don't know why God got me on the stars and the people that's in the limelight and, you know, things of that nature because he got you there for a reason. You know what I'm saying? When you think about the rappers, you know, every rapper, majority of them went through a struggle. They went through poverty. They went through lack. They got out of the ghetto and things of that nature. But what? Where's? How is your mind? You know what? You know with the money that you get. I mean, you know, are you squandering it, or are you using to 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 make this earth a better place? You know what I'm saying? Are you causing, you know, different type of projects or? organizations to be able to help people be better. We want, I want people to be abundant and prosperous. I want people to be abundant and prosperous and successful in everything that they do. I don't want to oppress nobody. I ain't trying to get rich off nobody. I want to put money in their hands. And the only way money can get in your hands, you got to heal from within. You know what I'm saying? All this external it's fine, but if you ain't happy from within, if you ain't built your abundance from within, it don't mean nothing. I remember I was listening to Will Smith, and I know a lot of people don't really, you know, get down with Will Smith right now, but I don't care. You know what I'm saying? I mean, things happen in people's lives. You know, everything happened. You know, but one statement he made was, he was like, my family, money, my wife. Material wealth, whatever it is, it cannot make me happy. And he said it has not made him happy. He had to go within and find his true happiness. So when he when he go into whatever room or whoever he come in contact with, he bring happiness with him. He bring it with him. He don't he don't go to get to he don't go for people to make him happy. He bring happiness with him. I'm already happy. I'm already fulfilled. How can I be a blessing to you? You understand what I'm saying? I ain't trying to take from you. I'm trying to add to you. So it was really empowering too when I heard that message. And um, salute to you. Salute you, Will Smith. You know what I'm saying? God is good. You know what I'm saying? He'll deliver us out of anything that we're going through. It don't matter how big or how small. You know what I'm saying? We really got to deal with our inward healing and deal with the root of why we go through what we go through. You know what I'm saying? Seriously. Why we do what we do. Just why? Is it for the money? 
Is it because God led you to do it? Is it really your purpose? Or is it just something that you just gifted with? Is it bringing multiplication? Is it bringing, is it becoming fruitful? Are you replenishing and, 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 uh, subduing it and, and being a, and having dominion over it, being a good steward over whatever God has given you? Are you? Those are questions. Because God is looking for people to be a multiplicator, a person that's going to be fruitful, a person that's going to subdue and replenish and have dominion of the things that he gives them in a pure and authentic way. He wants his image and his likeness to be in everything that we do because we are just vessels. We're just vessels. His spirit is supposed to dwell within us, a pure, authentic spirit that he is, that he may rule and reign within and project good within the earth. That's the whole purpose. But, you know, I'm just excited. I'm grateful. I'm thankful for this word that it has been fulfilled in my life. And I'm going forward to be able to speak a word in season for those that are weary and that the words that I speak would awaken whomever hear my voice to the truth of who they really are. That is my call and my mission. And I'm excited about it. I really, really am. And whoever hear this video, if you like it, hit the thumbs up. Leave a comment. You can subscribe because this is a powerful uh, platform. It might not look like it through the numbers, but it's powerful. I tell you that much because it's all God. And the enemy, when he come in, he come in to kill, steal, and to destroy that that is good. So if anything in your life seem like it's not going good, it's the enemy. So it's time to, to seek God. Look to him to say, Lord, what is it that I need to do to, to, to fix this situation? Because this ain't you. If it's not bringing fulfillment, peace, happiness, joy, it ain't God. Because that's who God is. And that's what he wants in our lives. And only we can create that by doing the work from within. It's not something external that can do anything when it comes to all these particular attributes that God possess. It's an inward thing. It ain't an outward thing. And God wants us to work ourselves. We have to do the work. We can, you know, people can talk to one another all day long. But if you ain't literally going into your sacred place and working on your inward man and asking God to heal you and make you whole, then, you know, it'll never work. You just obtain the knowledge. That's how I was in the church. Obtain the knowledge. I ain't against it, but I wasn't healing because I wasn't doing the work. I wasn't doing the work. And I didn't know nothing about doing the work until I found God on my own. So, yeah, you know, be encouraged. I hope this video encourages you again. And, um, yeah, y'all have a blessed day.